What's up everybody, Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick and I am back with a collection update. And yeah, this is gonna start into the whole Florida journey where I raided literally every fucking record store I could find within a certain mile radius around St. Pete Beach. I may have gone a bit overboard, which is why there's gonna be probably four of these that actually have all stuff that I got in Florida. And there's even some stuff on here that I just didn't have a chance to get to before I left, so there's even some stuff that I just got here as well. But yeah, I definitely want to shout out all the awesome record stores I hit down there. Clearwater Records, the Sound Exchange in both uh, St. Pete and Tampa, Steelworker Records, that place was absolutely awesome, and if you're in the Tampa area, that's a fucking giant metal head fucking record store. Like, that is pretty much almost all they carried there, which was absolutely awesome. And those are the ones I can remember offhand. Again, there was a lot of them that I hit, but we're just gonna get into this because there's a lot of cool shit in here, and the sooner I get done with this, the sooner I can move on to the next batch. So, let's do this shit. The Helicopters, Eyes of Oblivion. This is the eighth album from this Swedish retro rock act fronted by none other than Nick Anderson, formerly of Entombed. And I've been a fan of these guys for a while. I picked up I think by the grace of God when it came out and I was instantly hooked on this sort of 70s retro rock kind of power pop, a little bit of punk in there, but I don't know, everything seems latched onto just big fat rock riffs and giant hooks and this album is absolutely awesome. This is the first one they've done in years. They kind of went on hiatus, I think back in, oh uh, God, like 2011 and yeah, they kind of like split off to some different projects. Nick Anderson actually did Death Breath for a while, which John and I covered on here. And lo and behold, they kind of just got back together and put out a beast of an album. I really dig this one. In fact, I would say like this is possibly a little bit heavier than they have been. The guitars kind of have like an extra chunky sort of big rock sizzle to them. And man, the songs in here are just instantly just hooky as fuck. That little additional grit to it, both in the guitars and I'd say Nick Anderson's vocals have like a little bit more kind of gruffness to them. I don't know, it kind of just adds like an extra layer of sleaze to it, especially when you get down to uh, So Sorry I Could Die, which is a very bluesy jam, almost kind of like ZZ Top-ish. But a lot of this is kind of like close to like kind of like 70s power pop, like Cheap Trick. There's like a little bit of like Jay Giles Band on here too. Positively Not Knowing is like probably like the big punky jam on here, but the song Tin Foil Soldier <laughs> is pretty much this them trolling conspiracy theorists and shit like that, which was just a fuck ton of fun. All these songs are incredibly catchy. Like, I really miss this band, and I didn't realize how much I missed this band until I sat down and jammed this, and then I went back and jammed Rock and Roll's Dead and By the Grace of God again, and I still need to get more of their stuff. I think the earliest stuff I have is High Fidelity, which is also an awesome album. But yeah, Helicopters. This really isn't metal, but it's done by a metalhead, and again, such infectious hooks across the board. This is an absolutely killer album. If you're just a big fan of classic rock, Dude, get this. Again, hooky as hell, these songs will get stuck in your head, so check it out. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Unlimited Love. Not starting off very metal, but don't worry, we're gonna get very metal later. But I've been a long time Chili Peppers fan, and I was pretty excited about this one because this is the first album that John frusciante has been on since Stadium Arcadium. And welcome back, John. This actually kind of reminds me a bit of Californication. Now, I liked Josh Klinghoffer, I thought he was a really solid guitarist. I think he did some exceptional work on The Getaway. I'm With You I thought was good. I just think he was trying to emulate John Frusciante and sort of fit the style a little bit, but I think he really kind of came into his own on The Getaway. But John Frusciante is the guy that I associate with, you know, like my favorite era of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and they're absolutely killing it on here. I would say it might be a little bit of a safe album, like they're just playing to their strengths and just writing the big infectious hooks. I mean, Black Summer, Here Ever After, very catchy, but you know, very much stuff you've heard before from them. But it's sort of a welcome nostalgia because it's just them kind of executing their sound, which they have their own sound. Like there's, you know, pretty much one Red Hot Chili Peppers in my mind, and I kind of just want to hear Red Hot Chili Peppers, and that's exactly what I got on here. And I have to say, there's some pretty like nice big heavy tracks on here. Uh, These Are The Ways kind of brings in like a big stoner rock, like kind of fuzzy rock tone on it. And I really like that. Like it's not all the clean playing that you kind of associate with a lot of chili peppers these days. There's some good heavy rockers on here. And John Frusciante just knows how to write 
killer riffs and again with his vocals in there too pairing with anthony kiedis there's like a cool extra layer of melody on there that really appreciate it on here honestly one of the tightest rhythm sections out there with flea and chad smith chad smith is just a solid rock drummer flea does all sorts of cool shit on here he actually does uh trumpet on aquatic mouth dance and the bass solo on one-way traffic fucking absolutely awesome yeah if you're a red hot chili peppers fan I would say 100% get this. this. I wouldn't say like as a return to form because I don't think they ever really left their form very much. Well, maybe like one hot minute. But this is just that fun comfort zone that Red Hot Chili Peppers knows how to execute. And these songs are fun, infectious. Feels like this should have come out in like the middle of summer because this is very much summer listening, I think. But another killer album from these guys. So yeah, uh, if you love Chili Peppers, might already have this, but if not, Check it out. It's fucking awesome. Hangman's Park, 11. This is the first full length from this Washington-based Death Doom act. This was actually sent to me by uh, their frontman slash guitarist slash occasionally bassist on here, uh, Max Davis. And he was kind enough to send me a cool shirt too, which is why I'm repping that. And I'd actually covered one of their albums or like their EP a while ago and uh, I might have savaged it a little bit. But it was sent to me by uh, Chris or Crypt over at Metalomania. And after that, I ended up becoming friends with Max. And Max is a solid dude. And he was willing to send me a copy of their new album. And honestly, this band has improved a lot. Their initial sound was kind of like a hodgepodge, like hardcore, metalcore sort of feel. Like a little bit of thrash here and there. Like it was kind of all over the place. Now, this is also all over the place too. And it is a strange mix of like death metal, doom metal, sludge, very interesting songwriting, like transitions kind of coming out of nowhere. A lot of this reminds me of like early Melvins. And I mean, they're from Washington. So, I mean, Melvins is kind of still steeped in the uh, musical DNA out there, I think. And I really dug that. I'm a big Melvins fan and I kind of like the whole like weird, unpredictable nature of the music, but that mixed with like death metal riffs. Good example of the song Dismal Witch. You get like morbid angel tremolos, but you also get that sort of weird, like kind of off time sort of Melvins thing. Like the drum work is kind of similar to Dale Crover. And they even throw in like a little bit of thrash metal on Altar of Pigs. This is a really interesting listen and honestly I like it a lot more in the debut. Like these guys have vastly improved. It's very raw production. I mean this is self-released but the one thing that kind of bothered me on here and it's really not like much of a knock, the vocals. And it isn't the vocal delivery. The vocal delivery is really good. It's just I think the vocals are very dry. Like if you're kind of going for that weird sort of Melvin's vibe, throw in some weird distortion on them every now and then. Like, I feel like all the vocals in here, they kind of just did a dry take and they're very out in front. But production aside, you know, it's a solid album. I really enjoyed this one. It's just sort of a weird listen and I like the unpredictable nature of it. And again, if it reminds me of Melvin's and death metal at the same time, that's pretty damn cool. And honestly, it kind of gets more odd as it goes on. And I mean, there's a little thing in here that says something about butt metal. Like, I guess that's what they call themselves, which it's not butt rock. Like butt metal, instantly greater than butt rock. If this is butt metal, I don't know what it is. I mean, it's kind of a joke. I think that they have is like a, a band joke, but if this is butt metal, butt metal's pretty cool. So yeah, I recommend checking this one out. It's a weird listen. Like I said, Melvin's death metal, thrash metal, weird songs strange songwriting, but ultimately it's fucking fun. And that was kind of what I expected and they delivered and they showed massive improvement from the earlier stuff. So yeah, definitely check this out. Killing Joke, Lords of Chaos EP. This is the first new material since 2015's Pylon, which is one of my favorite Killing Joke albums in terms of like recent releases. Now for those that watch Metal Madness 66, which if you're not, you should because he's been doing really cool deep dives and I actually have the pleasure of doing one on Killing Joke with him. We covered pretty much everything and we were both really excited to hear that there was some new material coming out. And well, it's kind of just a short offering. This is literally like one of those EPs I would say is just a teaser. There's only two new tracks and then two remixes of two of the songs that were on Pylon. The opening track, Lords of Chaos, the title track is a fucking ripper. Like there's a great fucking chunky riff in there. The guitars sound really thick and just massive on it. 
and it's just catchy. It's a up-tempo song. And then Total is maybe like a little bit more atmospheric, though it still kind of has that same biting energy, but I really like the synths on the chorus. And then the other two tracks, they have the Big Buzz Motorcade mix, which is just a stomping techno mix. And honestly, I, I kind of liked it. I thought it was a really good remix. And and I'm kind of fearful that it's going to destroy my fucking speakers if I play it in there. And then uh, Delete in Dub is a remix of Delete, and it's a dub remix. And uh, it's probably my least favorite track on here. Like, it's just kind of an odd atmospheric mix. And I don't know, I really didn't get into it. I'm kind of hoping that this is just sort of a preamble to buy some time before they come out with a new album because Killing Joke fucking rules. I've been a giant fan since I was a teen and that still continues. So the two songs that are on here that are new definitely have me hyped for a new release. And as much as I don't like do like remixes of albums anymore, like it feels like that was like kind of a 90s and early 2000s thing. The other two were okay. Well, mostly Big Buzz was okay. But yeah, um, I wouldn't say this is like this is the most necessary release of theirs, but if you're a Killing Joke fan, just go get it because it's Killing Joke and they're still doing some killer shit. And again, I think this is just a teaser. At least I'm hoping it's just a teaser. But yeah, check this out because it's Killing Joke and Killing Joke is awesome. And that's the only reason I really need, which is why I bought this. So yeah, check it out. Time Ghoul, 1992 to 1994 discography. This is a reissue of Time Ghoul's two demos, Tumultuous Travelings and Panoramic Twilight. First one coming out in 92, second one coming out in 94 from this very odd sci-fi death metal act from Missouri. Very short-lived band, but they had a profound impact on at least one band, Blood Incantation. This was like one of their big influences. Now I got this courtesy of Thrash Maniac 99. I actually played a Master of Metallum game with him and uh, Metal Ben over on Metal Ben's channel. And I won. This was my prize. Metal Ben did a damn good job too. It was a lot of fun doing it. It was a really difficult kind of guessing game like kind of like family feud except you know metal he does this on his channel every now and then i recommend checking it out it's a fun game i might have to get in on another match but this was my prize and this is really fucking awesome wild death metal now i want to keep this one short because since there are only two demos and this band is you know been defunct for a while kind of want to do a retro review on it and I kind of want to bring in Jam and Jum because I think he'd really get into this weirdness. But if you can guess, if they're one of the main influences behind Blood Incantation, you can kind of imagine how they sound, except they sounded this way way back in the early 90s. The first disc is, you know, both the demos and I absolutely love that. The second disc is a lot of odds and ends like rehearsals and like kind of half ideas for songs are not really well recorded. Like these were just kind of pulled from like tapes they had and they didn't really like remaster them much. There's some live tracks in there, but again, the audio quality, not that great. But overall, this is a really cool release. And again, I wanna do a flat out retro review for this because there's a lot of cool stuff to actually talk about on here that I'm not gonna talk about right now because again, I think a full on retro review is in order for this. But yeah, if you have never heard of this band and you love Blood Incantation, I definitely recommend this one. You're gonna find a lot of similarities. Check it out. Night, Voices of the Cronian Moon. This is the second album from the San Francisco based blackened heavy metal slash speed metal act. And holy shit, this is really fucking good. I've been hearing a lot of buzz about this album and I heard one track, I believe it was Edge of the Night and I was hooked. I fucking ordered it. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to go over it before I left on vacation, but I'm gonna talk about it now and Fuck, this is just great. Like, musically, fucking just hits every fucking check mark for great heavy metal. Great leads, great harmonies, very anthemic driving songs, little bit of darkness to it to kind of like make it a little bit more blackened, but it's the vocals that really stand out here in both a good and a bad way. This dude sounds like Lemmy's fucking ghost, except, you know, Lemmy's ghost is communicating through an air conditioning vent someplace. Lots of reverb, lots of distortion, the graveliness to the throat, like you can kind of hear it and just so the intonation, it definitely has like a sort of a Lemmy vibe to it, but also a little bit of Nocturno from uh, Dark Throne too. In fact, some of this is kind of comparable to the direction that Dark Throne has taken, albeit a little bit more on the accessible side. Like these guys love big melodic hooks and 
literally every song on here is catchier than fuck. Like, I was struggling to find something I didn't like on here, and I kind of had to pivot back to the vocals because while I like them, they're a cool old school nod. At the same time, the delivery is kind of uniform across the board, like there's not a lot of variation. And honestly, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of power behind the vocals. So I think they kind of rely on the distortion, the atmosphere to really kind of make the whole black metal, you know, vibe kind of come out because musically, really more attached to the speed metal, heavy metal sound. I love the production here. It's very organic. It's very like kind of analog sounding, but it's mixed very well. In fact, the entire time I was listening to this, I was like, man, I think this is what maybe Aboth wanted, but he just mixed it wrong for that last album. But musically, I still think this is quite a bit better just in terms of like capturing that old school heavy metal feel. Aboth kind of shit the bed on the last one, unfortunately. Anyway, this, if you're looking for awesome black and heavy metal, this, I, I feel like this is how it's done. Like, I love the new Midnight, but that is definitely more like Venom worship. Like this, like all things classic heavy metal, like Scorpions, Harmonies, Iron Maiden, Angel Witch, Judas Priest, all that packed in the riffs with a Lemmy Ghost at the front of all of that. Definitely check this out. Fucking awesome album. This could be year of material. I don't know. I keep jamming it and it keeps getting better the more I jam it. So yeah, check it out. All right, we're finally getting into the Florida stuff. That was all the stuff that I had sitting here. And now we get to the, at least the start of this. So we have a pair here from Abscess. We have Urine Junkies, which is a compilation of all their early demos. And then we have Damned and Mummified from 2004. Now, in terms of Abscess, Abscess was kind of a continuation of Autopsy post Shit Fun. Shit Fun, uh, not a great album. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I think with Abscess, they did that whole punk meets death metal thing a lot better. And I think with Abscess being a different band technically, you know, the expectations weren't as high. Like, you didn't expect another Severed Survival or Mental Funeral. You were going to get a whole new band, essentially, even though I had a lot of familiar members, namely Chris Reifert on drums and vocals. And, yeah, dude's fucking awesome. So, you're in Junkies. Again, collection of old demos, and holy shit, these demos fucking rip. All these songs, I think, are pretty fucking awesome. There are three different demos on here, and, man... Catchy as hell, very punky, short songs, like almost kind of grindcore length. And again, it kind of captures that whole shit fun sort of era of Autopsy, but I think they just did it better on here. And the raw, gritty, nasty sound on <laughs> these demos is pretty much perfect for what they were going for. Chris has some absolutely maniacal over-the-top vocals, and that is only maybe outdone by his violent drumming. Like, I've Described drummers as aggressive before. Chris is a violent drummer and it's fucking all over here. And there is like a little bit of that mental funeral sort of like death doominess on 29th Lobotomy and I want to say it was raw sewage. Like there's a little bit of the doominess in terms of the intro before it goes full tilt boogie into fucking punk. Yeah, I absolutely fucking love this. This is a great collection. Now this one came out in 2004 and this was after a series of, you know, albums from Abscess. And at this point, it started to sound like Autopsy again. In fact, there's really not much in the way of punk in terms of like that being injected into their sound on this album at all. There were a couple of tracks that had a bit, I'd say the title track, Swallow the Venom and Tattoo Collector. A little bit of more punky side, but most of this is more groove laden, a little bit closer to the whole mental funeral sound. Like it kind of slowed down and grooved it up. And there's some sick fucking like death doomy moments on here. Twilight Bleeds and Empty Horizon, I think were fucking absolutely awesome tracks. My issue with this album though is it kind of just sounds like Autopsy again. And at this point, you know, since you actually have <laughs> like key members of Autopsy, why doesn't Autopsy just come back? Which they did, you know, not too long after this. I think they had maybe two other full lengths and then Abscess disbands, Autopsy comes back and starts putting out some pretty solid death metal again. I think this is good. Like, it's decent. There's a lot of cool Sabbathy riffs. But at the same time, it's pretty much an Autopsy album just with, you know, a different name on it. This I would highly recommend. Like, if you love punky fucking death metal and just stupid, dirty, gross fun, 
this is absolutely awesome. Both are good in different ways. I prefer this. This is just the raw, gritty, stupid stuff. And this is just, you know, uh, autopsy with just a different name on it. But yeah, uh, if you've never checked out Abscess, I recommend checking them out if you like your fucking death metal punky and sleazy as hell. This is that band. So yeah, check out both of these. They're both good. Just, you know, decidedly different from one another. But yeah, awesome stuff. Alarum. Fluid Motions. This is the debut album from this Australian-based progressive slash technical thrash act. I actually own one of their albums, Natural Causes. I picked it up forever ago and I was really impressed with it. There is a lot of like atheist and cynic worship in their sound and I really dug that and this debut pretty much embodies that. Very technical guitar playing, the songwriting kind of like off kilter, like a little like watchtower-ish. Vocals in here are kind of strange, like you get cleaner vocals, but you get a lot of hardcore shouts, which I don't know if necessarily works, like, you know, at least with Atheist, there was like a sort of a gritty, thrashy delivery, and, you know, same with like Death and such like that, like, the vocal delivery is kind of odd, but musically, man, this is some really cool, technical, but very melodic and catchy thrash metal slash prog metal. I really enjoyed the bass work on a lot of this, and in terms of like, weird proggy flips like going from like weird jazz fusion to just insane heavy metal songs like internal and could this be real like the dynamic flips between the styles is absolutely just fucking nuts but this album definitely has some like straightforward fucking rippers the song severed i think is just flat out brutal as hell now i do have some negatives about this the last track silence which i think is absolutely awesome and then they give you some hidden track bullshit like you wait a while and then you get like some extra stuff which is them sort of drunk singing in a studio which it's fun you know and it's kind of like a funny little extra thing but i don't like the whole hidden track thing anymore like i used to really like that when i was younger and it was kind of a thing in the 90s and this came out in 1998 so yeah i'm, I'm not a fan of that anymore it's just feels like extra wasted space and the vocals on here I don't think are quite the best like again you get hardcore shouts and the clean vocals are really flat and they don't really add much to the melody but outside of that this is an absolutely awesome album like I just have some minor gripes about it I like their other one but I don't know like there's a little bit more just sort of twisted experimental stuff on this one, I think. Solid album. If you're into like more modern bands like Cryptic Shift or Cryptosis, these guys have a very similar sound to them. Definitely check this one out. I'd say check out Natural Causes too. I really enjoyed that one. But yeah, solid stuff and uh, super glad I found this one. Ancient, the Canian Chronicle. This is the second album from this Norwegian melodic black metal band. Came out in 1996 on Metal Blade Records. And uh, I picked this one up because I actually own Svartalheim and Night Visit. And I actually like a good chunk of this band's stuff. Like, there's definitely some misfires in their back catalog, but I don't own them. Now, this one is definitely more along the lines of bands like Dissection, Early Demoborger, I'd say Old Man's Child, and maybe even Immortal. Like, it's definitely more melody-centric. A lot of keys, but uh, it depends on the track. Like, sometimes a track is completely overloaded with keys and I don't like it, and then other tracks like, ooh, that accents that riff perfectly and it's not bothering me. Way to go. This also features a very young Kimberly Goss on clean vocals on here, and she does a really good job. Her clean vocals add a lot. They're very haunting and very creepy, and the whole atmosphere in here is, you know, pretty, like, creepy. There's, like, kind of that sort of, like, vampire worship sort of fucking vibe to it. Like, it doesn't feel very raw and caustic. It's definitely more melody-centric, and they definitely went with, like, a bigger production here. Like, for 1996 and being black metal, this is definitely more polished production than you were getting out of, you know, a good chunk of black metal at that time. This is definitely more of, like, a mid-tempo sort of album. Like, there's not a ton of blast beats on here. And it's kind of a long album. Now, granted, this is a conceptual piece. This is, you know, about Kane's journey through the land of Nod after he was banished. And if you're into, like, Christian mythology, I think they do a pretty good job in here. Like, they have, you know, lots of movements within tracks and it's kind of like broken down into movements and I think they tackle it pretty well. But there's some dumb extra stuff on here. The track EXA, which is an instrumental, is a lot of groaning and moaning and tribal progression and then all of a sudden you start hearing what I assume is Kimberly Goss 
making sexy noises and keeps building up. And I was like, man, is this song about to come? This is kind of awkward. And then it did. And it was weird for both of us, both me and the CD, same room, just why? Like, I I know it probably fits somewhere in the conceptual shit on here, but uh And then the last track, Homage to Pan, the song sounds good, and then it stops, and then you were left with six minutes of a bass rumble in the background. Like, that's it. Like, it's just a rumbling bass sort of synth thing, and it was pretty much a big what the fuck sort of ending to this. I could have just ended the song, maybe like a little bit of that bass rumble and have it fade out, but no, six minutes of that bullshit. So yeah, there's definitely some extra shit they could have trimmed off here, but overall, this isn't really a bad album. I think I like Svartalheim a little bit more. It was a little bit more straightforward, I think. This one may have got lost in the conceptual stuff. Might have decided it was a good idea to throw a bunch of fuck noises on there too. I don't know, like, some of the decisions on here were a little questionable. I don't know, I think maybe Dan Swano, who produced this, probably should have said, hey, you know that whole, uh, fuck track? Maybe don't. Maybe don't. Maybe just get rid of that because, uh, no. But the band was like, no, the fuck track stays because Ancient is sexy, I think. I don't know. Overall, though, not a terrible album. I recommend it if you like melodic black metal. I think it's pretty solid there. Uh, I definitely want to get some more of their stuff. I know there's definitely some albums to avoid in their back catalog, but yeah, this was pretty solid, so check it out. Anthrax, Armed and Dangerous EP. Came out in 1985, and this is the debut of Joey Belladonna on vocals and Frank Bello on bass in terms of a recording. Now, I love Joey Belladonna, and honestly, I think he was a step up from Neil Turbin. Now, I pretty much just got this because I was missing it. Like, you know, I just went from Fistful of Metal right to Spring of the Disease. I love both those albums, Spring of the Disease, I definitely think is better. And a lot of that is due to them becoming better musicians and getting a better vocalist, and Joey fucking kills on here. Now, Armed and Dangerous, the original version is on here, which is also on Spring of the Disease, but Raise Hell, I think, is an absolutely killer track, and that's more of like an exclusive track to this one, I believe. Now, I think Armed and Dangerous was kind of an interesting one to open up with because it's definitely more of an epic track, like there's more soft acoustic sections, more melody to it, and I don't know if it was going to be indicative of what all they would unleash in spreading the disease, but kind of an interesting gamble, but it does showcase Joey's vocals very well on there. Honestly, my favorite part of this were the live tracks. They covered Sex Pistols' God Save the Queen, which is absolutely awesome, and then Metal Thrashing Mad and Panic Live with Joey sound fucking awesome. Now, there are some um, live tracks or at least like rehearsals with Neil Turbin on here, which I think are good too, but it's the Joey show for the most part in here, and it's awesome. So yeah, really not much to say about this one. It's sort of just a teaser for what is to come and what came was Spreading the Z's, and that album's fucking awesome. So yeah, I just kinda got this to patch up a hole in the collection, and it's good. It's a fun EP, and Anthrax is fun, and I can't wait for the new album. So yeah, Anthrax rules, and if you haven't checked this out, it's definitely worth a listen. Anthropophagus. No Waste of Flesh. This is the debut album from this Italian brutal death metal act. It came out in 2011 on Comatose Music, and I actually have one of their later albums, and I really dug it, so I saw this and I figured, well, why not check out what they sounded like initially, and what they sounded like was suffocation. This band fucking definitely loves suffocation. It's in the guitar riffs, it's in the vocals, the drum sound, like it has a lot of those, you know, Mike Smith blast beats, a lot of the suffocation level breakdowns, like this is pure suffocation worship, which I have no fucking problem with. Now vocally it does break it up with some higher screams every now and then, which, you know, Frank definitely stayed really low. And there's some fun gory samples on here too, to sort of like, you know, segue into songs or intro them. And it's kind of interesting because like this was like, I think the lone one where they were like more gore centric. There's also even some porn samples on here, which, Seems to be a bit of a theme, but uh, you know, this was definitely more uh, like just straightforward, brutal and ugly. Like later on, the themes would shift to more uh, cosmic or what the fuck ever. It definitely wasn't gore anymore or porn, but it was still really good. Now, I love suffocation worship, but I definitely think it's been done better. 
this is very just straightforward. Like, it's a very mean potatoes, suffocation worship, death metal album. Not a lot of frills, not a lot of flashiness. Like, really not a lot of lead work, but, you know, the riffs are tight, even though they sound like Terrence Hobbs has played them before. But it's pretty good. I do have some issues with the drum sound. Like, the drums, I kept thinking, were a drum machine. Like, they have, like, a very exact, precise sound, and it just sounds like a drum machine, but apparently that is an actual drummer, at least said so on you know, the archives, but I don't know, it just kind of has that sort of like static sound, like it's, I don't know, it's a little too precise for me. There is a really cool Slayer cover of Necrophobic on here, and uh, again, this is one that just does like a weird hidden track thing, and it was just, you know, at this point, going through the tail end of Ancients, and then, you know, the hidden track and Alarm, I was like, dude, I am fucking done with the whole hidden track thing. But yeah, this is pretty decent, it's straightforward, you know, suffocation worship. I mean, if you love suffocation, you're gonna find a fuck ton of stuff you love on here. I like their later stuff a little bit more. There's a little bit more nuance to it and it's still absolutely brutal as fuck. But yeah, this pretty decent debut. And like I said, if you like suffocation, uh, you should definitely check this out. Armored Saint, Raising Fear. This is the third album from this LA heavy metal act featuring John Bush and Joey Vera. Came out in 1987, and this is a different reissue than I've been getting here. I've been getting the, was it Rock Candy or whatever the hell those reissues are. This is actually out on Metal Blade. And, well, I mean, I love John Bush. I've been meaning to get more Armored Saint. I saw this one, and I've heard a lot of praise about this album, and I can see why. This one is maybe like a little bit heavier and a little bit darker than the previous albums. That heavier sound kind of makes it stand apart from the albums that preceded it. And man, God, the fucking songs are so goddamn catchy. There's a bit more like thrashy energy to it, especially on songs like Chemical Euphoria, which has some absolutely incredible leads on it. And the feel, like the whole like vibe in this, it's just a little bit more darker and a little bit more sinister than the previous albums. Human Vulture and Book of Blood, which I think are absolutely awesome standouts on here, really kind of have like uh, just a darker sort of vibe to them. Like the riffs are a little bit more sinister. And while John Bush is like singing his fucking balls off, it doesn't feel like necessarily like as anthemic as other stuff. Like it feels again more dark and foreboding. And again, that kind of makes this one stand out a little bit. Now, one thing I think is just kind of odd is the second track on here is a cover, which that just seems really too soon to have a cover on your album. They do a cover of Saturday Night Special, which fucking killer song by Leonard Skinner. It's not necessarily the cover itself because they do a great job. Like it's a solid fucking cover and they really kind of beef it up and give it like a big Judas Priest sort of vibe to it. But it's where it comes on the list because again, second track, it's a cover. I just think that's sort of an odd placement for it. But that is probably the only complaint I have about this. In terms of the early Armored Saint stuff, I got shit, man. This one's... This one might be one of my favorites now. Like, I really fucking dig this album. The riffs are fucking great. Joey Vera's bass lines on here, stupid good. Frozen Will slash Legacy, my God, that dude is fucking killing it on there. I strongly recommend this one if you have never heard this one, if you're just getting into Armored Saint, much like I am right now. This would not be a bad place to start at all. Great heavy riffs. Again, it's a little bit darker and a little bit heavier than the previous albums, though I recommend those previous albums too. I think those are all good too, but this one, absolutely whoops ass. Super glad I picked this one up, and if you have never checked this one out, strongly recommend it. Atriarch, Ritual of Passing. This is the second album from this Portland-based blackened doom metal act. I actually own one of their albums, uh, An Unending Path, and I liked it for the most part. Now, this one was definitely a little bit more on the raw side, and when it comes down to production, I think they embodied more of the black metal side than they did the doom side. But there's some interesting things in the production here. I think the bass sound on here is very trippy. Like, I don't know, like there's like a weird sort of like stoner vibe to the bass for some odd reason, like especially in the song Prayer, that's where I really heard it the most. But the rest of it, very, again, black metal, like uh, very gainy guitars, very raw sounding, a lot of nods to like Hellhammer, Celtic Frost, like more along that line. And some really interesting like creepy chants to sort of like create the dismal atmosphere in here and the song Alters. Actually, it kind of sounds like blackened neurosis in spots. Now, unfortunately, 
a lot of this really didn't grab me very much. I think this album maybe got caught a little too much in just trying to make it atmospheric, but not make it memorable. There's not a lot of like riffs that really jumped out at me. Like there's definitely some, but not many. And when it came down to like, you know, generating a melodic hook, because they do definitely try in here, they just didn't necessarily land them. I think they did a really good job on the song Curse. There's like a dark desperation in the vocals, and I just think that song kind of comes together a lot better than a good chunk of this. But for the most part, a lot of this just kind of screams like this is something dark and creepy you can put on the background, and I don't know, like, it's kind of hard to really just get sucked in by it. But at the same time, you don't necessarily want to turn it off because it isn't really bad at all. It's just, I don't know, kind of lost in making it sound creepy, but again, not very memorable. And, you know, kind of being hit or miss on the melody aspect when it's trying to attempt some melodies kind of hurt it. But there are some good songs. Again, Alters and Cursed, I think, are the big standouts for me. But overall, this was just... Uh, a decent album. I definitely liked An Unending Path a bit more than this one. It's sort of an odd mix and I don't know, like I feel like it's more blackened than it is Doom. Like there's definitely Doom in the riffs, but I think maybe Doom production and more blackened vocals might have, you know, helped this one out a little bit just in terms of making it sound more full because when it comes down to like Doom Metal, I want like those giant sludgy Doom laden guitars and I think the more gainy sound in here just didn't really do it for me. But overall, I still recommend checking it out for my own opinions, of course. Don't just trust me. But I thought this one was just kind of okay. Uh, I recommend An Unending Path. I think that one's pretty good. I think it's at least better than this one. But yeah, check this band out. It's a very interesting listen. And again, if you like stuff like Celtic Frost and Hellhammer and maybe like a little bit of Neurosis, I think there's some stuff in here you'll probably get into. So yeah, check it out. The Grime Eximius set ablaze the kingdom of Abraham. This is their debut EP, came out in 2009, and this is a black and death metal act, I believe it's from Alberta. Now, I actually brought up this band a while ago in a black and death metal underrated album segment. Uh, Visions of the Scourge was the one I had before this, and I really liked that one. Very riffy, just nasty black and death metal. I would say like this is a little bit more on the death metal side, though the vocals definitely scream black metal kind of across the board like there's a good pivot between the higher black metal shrieks and screams to the low guttural death metal vocals but riff wise this is very latched to like a lot of 90s death metal uh, i would say some incantation there like there's just this oppressive darkness to it that isn't necessarily just black metal it's like death metal darkness too which Death Metal does darkness pretty fucking well, too. Lots of apocalyptic riffing, again, like incantation, but mix in some angel corpse in there. Very intense listen. I loved all the original tracks on here. Archfiend, He of Wretched Deeds, and All Devour. I dug them all, and they're all different from one another, which I really like. And they're all different from one another. Like, you get flat-out, like, nasty death metal breakdowns, you get blast beats, you get some Dark Throne, sort of, like, punkier era, like, D beats in there. And I absolutely love the dreary, just dark groove of He of Wretched Deeds. Like, that was a big standout for me. But one of my favorite little nuggets on here was the last track, the cover of Autopsies Ridden with Disease off of Severed Survival, which is such a fucking killer album and they did a great job they really didn't like blacken it up very much it's very much a straightforward cover but i love that song they did a great job i think the production was like a little bit murkier in there like it may have just been a demo that they tagged on this ep but yeah fucking killer ep i definitely want to get more of their stuff i've had visions of the scourge since it came out and i've been meaning to get more stuff from this band i believe they are still around so yeah i'm gonna be hunting down more because yeah this is just fucking killer stuff so yeah, if you've never jammed Begream Eximius, I recommend Visions of the Scourge too, but this fucking EP, like just in terms of a shorter offering, like it's a little bit over 20 minutes, check this out. And I'm pretty sure if you love death metal and black metal, you're probably gonna dig this. So yeah, check it out. Beyond Terror, Beyond Grace, Our Ashes Built Mountains. This is the second album from this, at least then Australian death grind act. Now, I brought these guys up in, I believe, a black and death metal underrated video. Probably the same one as the Grim Eximius, actually. And I really like that last album, Nadir. I think it's absolutely awesome, super underrated, and unfortunately they broke up after that. But before that, they were a death grind act. And talk about a fucking giant flip in style. Like, this could not be any more different than Nadir. This is straight up 
Death Grind, there are 20 tracks on here versus, I think, six or seven on the last one because, again, they lengthened out all the songs, became way more atmospheric, became a, like a very just different band. But as far as them being a grind band, they were pretty good. Like, this is just straight up nasty Death Grind. These songs are fast, brutal, violent as hell. I mean, it's exactly what you expect from anything grind related. The guitar tone is kind of like an HM2 sort of snarl, but I don't know, it has like kind of a static hiss to it. Like the production here isn't necessarily the best, but I mean, in terms of capturing just rawness and aggression, it definitely does that. It's very distant. There's a lot of cool vocal trade-offs on here. A little bit of atmosphere just in terms of like peppering it in between songs, though I do think they went a little bit overboard on uh, Flightless because I would say the atmospheric interlude where it has like samples and maybe like a spoken word, uh, it is most the song. Like, you know, it. <laughs> the songs are only like, you know, for the most part, around the two minute range. So if half the song is like an intro in a two minute track, that's, yeah, you're kind of like cutting off the song at the nuts there, at least in my opinion. Now, you can actually hear stuff that would be a little bit more indicative of the direction they were going on there. Uh, just in terms of like, again, the more distant riffs or some atmospheric moments, but the biggest tell was the song Murakami, which is the lone eight and a half minute song. Actually, I think it's almost nine minutes. And of course you see an eight and a half or nine minute song on a grind album. You're kind of wondering what that one's going to be all about. And this is their more atmospheric jam. In fact, this would not sound out of place on the album Nadir. More atmospheric tremolos, slower pace. You know, it, it definitely was them sort of showcasing the direction they were going to follow. And while it sticks out like a sore fucking thumb on this album, it was still really good. And again, I'm a big fan of Nadir. This, I think, is pretty solid. Like, I definitely want to check out their first album, hear what that one's all about. I believe that one also is very much a grindcore album, too. But this is good. Nadir is definitely the one that wins over for me. And maybe with the fact that they only have three albums, maybe we'll do a full-on retro review of these guys one day, just because I think they had a very interesting sound and they were willing to really change it and push themselves creatively. While the discography is short, it's actually a really interesting one. But yeah, uh, if you love Death Grind and Grindcore, like this is just like very much in the vein of like Nawsome and Rotten Sound. And if you love shit like that, I recommend checking this one out. Again, check out Nadir, their last album. Very different, but incredible. I think it's just an absolutely underrated album. But yeah, so far from what I've heard, the Death Grind stuff, pretty fucking good. So check it out. All right, back to Australia we go. Cause I got a pair here from the Berserker. I have their self-titled debut came out in 2000 and their 2002 album, Dissimulate. Now these guys, <laughs> one of the weirdest death grind bands out there. This was industrial death grind. All the drums are uh, incredibly uh, not hiding the fact that they are a drum machine like they make mortician sound way more fucking subtle in terms of like using a drum machine. These guys use a lot of like techno and like like hardcore techno, like the fast, I think they called it like gabber beats and shit like that, but revved them up to the point of blast beats and then threw on death metal and grindcore riffs on top of it and made for some fucking chaotic, over the top, insanely violent music and for the most part, Pretty fucking interesting. Now their debut is definitely a little bit more on the raw side and this is the uh, 2001 reissue with a bonus disc full of commentary, live stuff, uh, outtakes. I kind of skipped over that one. Like, all right, I want to get down to the main album and it's very raw. It's uh, a little bit grating when it comes down to the drums because man, the drums are so fucking loud and the techno bass drum that they use on most of the tracks is just obscenely loud and well i mean it's loud anyway because it's death grind but i don't know like it really kind of makes this like a grating listen except for you know some spots where we kind of break it down a little bit more overall this band is kind of like batshit fucking crazy like that is pretty much the way to describe it. I mean, they are Carl the Berserker, so what the fuck else would you expect? This is almost kind of like a more raw version of Anala Nothrak, like take Napalm Death and Brutal Truth and then mix it up with like God Flesh and Ministry and uh, crank all that up to 11 and add a fuck ton of interesting samples in between songs. It's a fucking caustic listen, but unfortunately as it went on, I kind of got more 
tired with it just because again those electronic drums are so goddamn loud and then towards the end they threw on a couple of noise tracks 95 and ode to nash those songs can fuck right off it's just ear bleeding noise screams samples irritating everything it's uh, you know, not the way to end an album because man i think i quit halfway through ode to nash I was like dude I, if this is all there's going to be then I'm gonna fucking turn it off. But there were some ideas in here that I thought were pretty fucking fun. I think the breakdown on the song Massacre is all explosions and gunshots. Like they actually formed a beat out of that, which I think is kind of fucking clever. But yeah, this one, a little bit rough. The Simulate, I think, is an improvement. Now, granted, the irritatingly loud electronic drums are still there, but I think this is mixed better. It's a bigger sounding album, and they threw in a little bit more groove. Now this is just an obscenely fast album, much like this one, but there are some bigger, groovier pockets. And I think riff wise, just because the guitars are a little bit more prominent, I think it's a little bit more memorable. The riffing is a bit tighter and they even kind of like broaden out a little bit. Like there's some really cool thrashy riffs in the song Compromise. And I think as an album, this flows just quite a bit better. Now, I didn't put either one of these on my phone to actually play in my car because I'm reasonably sure those fucking drums are just going to be annoying as hell. It's a flat out fucking speaker wrecker and I don't want to trash my speakers. But I definitely would come back to these, especially this one. I do like that they do a really interesting cover of Carcass's Corporal Jigsaw Quandary and I don't know, again, like I like it, but those electronic drums can get a bit irritating. Overall, I do like this band. It's just, man, I, I know like the mission state must be as loud and as crazy and as fast as fucking possible on here and be a bit different, but sometimes it's just a fucking bit much. I think maybe in a live setting, I would probably like this, but I believe this band is defunct. Like I know the guys behind it are in the band Werewolves, which if you guys haven't checked out Werewolves, holy shit, those guys are awesome. They're getting ready to throw out a third album and I already love that lead off track, We Are Better Than You. Holy shit, that is such a fucking awesome song. But they actually have Dave Haley on drums on that one, and with a real drummer, it sounds a lot fucking better. But these guys do have some other albums. I might actually get them. Again, this isn't something I would listen to every day, but for the novelty and the insanity of it, pretty fucking fun, ridiculous band. So yeah, if you've never jammed the Berserker and you have a like nice system in your car, Maybe don't turn it up that loud because I have a feeling this will just wreck shit in there. But I recommend checking them out. It's absolutely batshit crazy and aggressively Australian and flat out fucking insane, but uh, pretty fucking fun, honestly. So yeah, check it out. Black Crown Initiate, Song of the Crippled Bull EP. This is the debut EP from Black Crown Initiate. Reading Pennsylvania progressive death metal acts and I've actually had this. I downloaded it forever ago because I couldn't find a physical copy and I lucked out at one of the record stores and I found a physical copy and I got it because I fucking love this band and this is the EP that got me into them. And it did not take long for me to get into it. I was already into Rivers and Isle and these guys are very similar. In fact, Andy Thomas is taking over on guitars, at least for live shows for Rivers and Nile right now because their guitarist just recently exited. But yeah, I love this EP. All four tracks are really good. I absolutely love the title track. And the opening track, Stench of the Iron Age, is fucking classic. Again, this is what got me into the band. Now this came out on PRC Music and I believe later on they shifted over to Metal Blade for their full length. And then the next album they're on E1. And then on the last album they're on Century Media, so there's a lot of label jumping with this band, unfortunately. But hopefully they find a home at least with one label because uh, it seems like this band has like runs of bad luck. I believe the frontman and Andy Thomas, the guitarist and clean vocalist, and I believe principal songwriter are the only original members left. So there's a lot of you know uh, turnover, unfortunately, in this band. And these guys have been sidelined by bad luck on the road and having like their equipment stolen, but. I, I hope the best for this band because I really love what they do. I think their last album was fucking remarkable. I think actually all their albums are remarkable and this EP is remarkable too. So yeah, if you have never checked out Black Crown Initiate, I'd say like their you know, more recent stuff is definitely more polished than this, but this is still really good and you can kind of hear them just really getting this sound together. It's an awesome EP. I strongly recommend it if you can find a copy. I believe these are kind of hard to find now, but if you find it, get it because it's absolutely awesome. So check it out. 
And finally, we're gonna end this off with a pair from Blood for Blood. This is their debut album, Spit My Last Word, came out in 1997 on Victory Records, and this is their 2002 album, Outlaw Anthems, came out also on Victory Records. And that was kind of the big thing here, was I wanted some old school Victory Records sell hardcore, and this was one of those bands that I got into when I was buying those old Victory style compilations. And this is, as advertised, straight up hardcore. These guys formed in Boston, Massachusetts, and they have pretty much just been straight up hardcore the entire time they've been together. And there's some like extenuating circumstances in terms of the band that I'll get into here in a minute, but let's talk about the albums first. Debut, pretty decent. It's just straight up hardcore, a lot of, you know, sick of it all, agnostic front worship with a little bit of like extra snarl and maybe like a little bit more metal to it. Like, it's very heavy sounding. The guitars are just chunkier in hell. Lots of big hardcore breakdowns, D beats. It stomps. It's just straight up awesome hardcore. Except for one song on here. The song Redemption is a nine minute plus hardcore song that just kind of drags. Like, every verse essentially is a spoken word thing about, like, hey man, my life's tough and this sucks and that sucks. Like, it's good, like the meaning behind it, the intention behind it is cool, but man, nine fucking minutes, and it really doesn't have a lot of like movements to it or anything like that. Like it is essentially just a dragged out song of the dude telling a story. And it was like, that's cool, maybe sum it up, but yeah, it does not do much. And the chorus hooks on it, uh, a little bit weak. I think the uh, clean vocals on here probably could have just gone without them because they really didn't add much and again they kind of came off kind of flat and when you have two vocalists on here eric medina and white trash rob lynn they're both belting out fucking nasty hardcore vocals and doing a great job i think that's kind of all you need now this one outlaw anthems is much more to the point like this is just a flat out rager from start to finish it really doesn't fuck around and deviate from the formula very much there's no nine minute tracks in here this is just straight up hardcore in your face. I think the production's a lot better and man, it's just a high energy listen. Like there's a little bit more like the punkier side, like a little bit more anthemic fun songs on here. Kind of like how Sick of It All likes to break it up. Like they have the flat out heavy songs, but you get these punky kind of sing-alongs that get the whole oh ohs going. A little bit more of that on here. And I think there's a little bit more humor on here too. The song's so common, so cheap. It's uh, the dude's ragging on some fucking chick that they broke up with and it's it's a nasty breakup apparently because he compares sex with her to fucking a shotgun wound. That's pretty fucking brutal. Hell, he even takes some shots at Limp Biscuit on here, which, you know, it's 2002. I mean, you know, shots at Limp Biscuit were definitely warranted, but it's fucking odd that shots at Limp Biscuit feel warranted once again, but... Uh, whatever. But overall, I definitely like this one more. It's straight to the point. It's hardcore. It's fucking rowdy. This is all fucking pit spinners. This one's still good. It's just, I think it's a little bloated and I think they were trying too hard on this one. This one, they just stuck to their guns. Now, the whole controversy, and I totally fucking forgot about this when I got this, was I believe back in 2012 or maybe 2014, their vocalist, or co-vocalist rather, uh, Eric Medina, actually got accused of sexual assault slash rape of a 13-year-old girl. Now, I don't know the entire story, but I think there might have been a conviction in there. I, I don't know, but that's a pretty fucked up fucking thing. So yeah, that was uh, a lot to process while I was just trying to jam this music and not think about that. Now the band kicked his ass to the curb immediately after that because that is exactly what they don't stand for, you know, that's fucked up. But unfortunately it was kind of a distraction listening to it, so it kind of went over it a couple more times. And musically, this is sound, I fucking dig it. Eric's fucking scumbag, but the rest of the band seem really cool. I mean, hell, even Billy from fucking Biohazard was actually like a live member for a while. So there's a lot of cool hardcore cred to this band. But yeah, I dig both these releases. I definitely want to get the other ones that I'm missing, which they don't have the longest discography. So 
Gonna have to hunt those down. But yeah, if you like straight up hardcore and you were looking for literally nothing else but straight up hardcore, this, both of these albums. Mostly I would say this one, but this one's still good. But yeah, check them both out, both really good. All right, that knocks out the first chunk. And honestly, like in hindsight, like <laughs> that might've been a smaller chunk. I don't know if the next one's gonna be longer. This one felt like it was long enough, but yeah, I bought a lot of shit and it's kind of wide ranging and all over the place. And believe me, you will see that in the upcoming videos. As for other stuff going on, on the channel, uh, we are gonna get Exodus together here. We wanna get that one out before uh, John and I and potentially Miller leave for MDF. So we'll have something for you guys to watch that aren't able to attend that awesome festival. They did announce all the set time. So now we are fucking trying to navigate a path in terms of being able to see every band we wanna see, which starting to realize is gonna be pretty fucking tough, bordering on impossible, because I wanna see a lot of bands there. But yeah, uh, tons of other stuff coming, of course, reviews, and I'm gonna do some more underrated albums eventually as soon as I get through all the collection update stuff because I want to get caught up on that. And believe me, there's a lot of cool stuff in there that I want to show you. But yeah, plenty of stuff coming, of course, because we are perpetually busy trying to deliver all the cool metal shit we can for you guys. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We're also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there'll be a link down below. We are going to do something different on there here soon. It'll probably wait until after MDF because it's just a lot of shit going on before that, but we are gonna have some for you Patreon guys. It's just gonna take a little bit of time. And also below there, there will be a link to thrallsmetal.com. So if you would like to get one of our cool t-shirts, that is where to get them. Thank you all so damn much uh, for everything. We're always appreciative of all the comments and you know building this cool community around this channel and honestly all the other YouTube channels we've been bullshitting with. This has been a fun fucking journey, and I know this is like the weird thank you awkward part of the video, but I like doing it because I am legit thankful as fuck for all this. So once again, thank you all from the bottom of our blackened hearts, and we will catch you later.